and welcome to this autistic sales video which will explain what dissociative identity disorder is and how it is diagnosed. We will be describing the DSM-5 criteria, which are the criteria currently used to diagnose dissociative identity disorder. We're trying to grow our channel so we'd really like it if you could subscribe by clicking the button below. If you turn on notifications then you will get to know when we publish new videos. There are two versions of our video. This is the sensory friendly version. We also have a version which contains music and sound effects. Some of the content in this video has been taken from our longer video called Who Are Autistic Selves and Why Did We Start Our Channel? We feel it is helpful to have a standalone video on the criteria used to diagnose DID. What is dissociative identity disorder? Dissociative Identity Disorder, or DID, used to be called Multiple Personality Disorder. DID is diagnosed using the criteria in the DSM-5. This is the official manual used for classifying and diagnosing mental disorders and is published by the American Psychiatric Association. DID can be diagnosed when a person meets all five of the criteria listed in the DSM-5. We were first diagnosed with DID in 2004, when we were in our late 20s. We are going to quote the five criteria directly from the DSM-5 and then discuss examples from our assessment report to show why we were diagnosed with DID. The first criteria for DID is that there should be two or more distinct identities or personality states present, each with their own relatively enduring pattern of perceiving, relating to and thinking about the environment and self. We feel we are made up of several different identities or parts, with each one taken over at different times. We also experience identity confusion. We are often confused about who we are and are aware of other identities within us but don't always know exactly who they are. The second criteria in the DSM-5 is that amnesia must occur. This is defined as gaps in the recall of everyday events, important personal information and or traumatic events. An example from our report of us having amnesia was us not remembering we are cooking and forgetting to turn the oven off. This would usually be because we had switched into a different persona and the new persona had no memory of what we were doing. Nowadays, we do still experience amnesia and we still have memories held by one part which the rest of us can't access but we are better at controlling who fronts and when. We work more as a team and there is much more communication between the different alters. The third criteria listed in the DSM-5 is that the person must be distressed by the disorder or have trouble functioning in one or more major life areas because of the disorder. Although we celebrate having alters, embracing them and seeing them as enhancing, not spoiling our lives, it is also true that having DID can also be distressing and difficult for us. We often get confused and are not currently employed because of our difficulties. The final criteria in the DSM are that the disturbance is not part of normal cultural or religious practices and that the symptoms are not due to the direct physiological effects of a substance, for example alcohol or a general medical condition. To summarise, we were formally diagnosed with DID in 2004 because we met all the criteria in the DSM-5, namely that we were found to have two or more enduring personalities in the presence of amnesia and that our condition caused us distress was not due to our culture and occurred outside the use of alcohol. We also experience other types of dissociation, namely depersonalization and derealization. An example of depersonalization from our original assessment report was that we would often feel like we were watching ourselves from a point outside of our body and would feel floaty. This is still true for us today and often happens when we are feeling stressed or anxious in a situation. We will literally leave the situation in our mind and it enables us to cope in situations that we can't avoid, but also can't cope with. An example of derealization in us that we still experience today is when the world doesn't feel real. We can feel like the floor is rocking, as if we are on a boat. The language used in the DSM-5 is clinical, referring to DID as a disorder, but do we see it in that way? There are definitely times that having DID makes life impossible to manage, and it can be very limiting and disabling. 
However, through therapy, we are learning to embrace all the alters in our system and get to know and value all of our different selves. We feel having alters actually makes our life more structured and easier to manage. We don't really see ourselves as disordered and we feel positive about having DID. How can people support our work? Please subscribe to our Autistic Selves YouTube channel and follow us on our other social media sites. We also have a designated fundraising page where people can make small donations to us via PayPal or Stripe. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please post them below and we will do our best to answer them. Thank you for your support from Naomi, Fiona and everyone at Autistic Selves.